Hello, my name is Ram and welcome to another video of Matuklasan. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create histogram frequency polygon ogive using the chart and graph function in Microsoft Excel. Now, if you want more discussion about histogram, frequency, polygon, and ogive, you can check my statistics playlist below. But if you're ready, let's begin. There are three ways for us to visualize numerical data from frequency distributions like this using histogram, frequency, polygon, and ogive. Suppose a statistics student listed the ages of the top 50 wealthiest people in the world from the Forbes magazine. Using this frequency distribution, we can create a histogram. And whenever you want to create a histogram, make sure that you have the class marks or the class frequency. The class marks or class midpoints here will represent the x-axis on our histogram, while the frequency will be the y-axis for the histogram. And how do we create such graph? All we need to do is to select these class marks and class frequency. Notice that I place a 0, 0 row here for me to create a gap from this y-axis up to this right side. This is important because we need to show that the frequency bar here for 3 corresponds to the class mark 38. Now, how about I show you the possible graph if I will remove this row. So removing this row will give us this kind of graph. So wala yung gap dito, di ba? Let's continue. Bringing it back and selecting these two columns, you select insert. You can go to uh, recommended charts right away, but if not, we have a histogram icon here. For those with older versions without um, histogram icon, you can always select this vertical bars column or icon. Okay, how about we select this column? Notice here that these are for side-by-side -side charts. So we need to go here for more column charts. Then select this for frequency only. You can also select uh, charts with different colors separating the class midpoint and frequency, but that's not needed in our histogram. So we only need the frequency, right? So selecting this will give us this chart. But the problem is we have gaps in our frequency polygon or rather in our histogram. So we cannot call this histogram yet because it's more of a bar chart. So to remove the gap between these bars, all you need to do is to select one of the bars, right click and select format data series. All you need to do now is to make the gap with zero. So let's make this zero. Selecting enter and the gaps between the bars will now be removed. And of course, we can always format the bars by selecting these bars, go to format, and select the color palette that you like. How about this one? Now, how did I come up with these bars of different colors? So what I did is just select each of these uh, bars, right-click, and change the fill. Yep. That's it. You can also put the elements of the graphs by going to design. You can add any elements that you like. But for a faster option, you can always go to quick layout and selecting one of the options here. Like in this case, I want to add axis title. So you can edit this part for the class mark and age and this for the frequency part. And of course, you need to change the title of the chart. But what if you want to create a histogram but you don't have a frequency distribution like this? And instead, you only have this raw data on your sheet. You can still do it faster by using the data analysis option in the data ribbon. But if you don't have this add-in function on your Microsoft Excel, you can always check my video tutorial about the installation or adding this function in your data ribbon. Now, select data analysis, 
go to histogram, select histogram, then okay. Now, we need an input range. In this case, our input range is this set. Okay, after selecting the input range, we need to identify the bin range. Bin range is just like the range of our upper class limits. So, you still need to know your upper class limits or upper class boundaries for, for you to be able to use this function. If you like more discussion about this, you can check again my playlist about frequency distributions. Now, see here that we need the bin range. In this case, and in this case, I already I already have one, which is this one, 41, 48, 55, up to 90. Okay, it's up to 90. Then if you included the label, you can um, select this one. But since I just included the numbers here, I did not include the label for age. So I will not select this labels part. And for the output range, how about selecting this part? Okay, so I just need to select an output range for this one. Let's say I want it here. And all you need to do is to press OK or select OK. If you want a Pareto chart or cumulative percentage, which are also discussed in other types of charts and graphs, no, you can always select this. But in this case, I only need the frequency table, so I'll just select this. Okay. So no, notice here that we already have the bin, the upper class limits, and the correct frequency for the data. Okay, so here, you can see that we have the same data here, right? And you can now proceed with the charts and graphs. All right. Now, how about the frequency polygon? Assuming that we are comparing the cost per meal in pesos of two cities, namely city A and city B. So here we have the frequency for city A and the frequency for city B corresponding to the each of the price range. And if we want to create a frequency polygon for these two cities like this one, we'll be needing the class marks or class midpoints. How about we create the first frequency polygon for city A? So you need to select these two columns, the class mark and the frequency for city A. You can go to recommended charts and select this one. But if not, you can select this, insert a line graph, and you need to go to more line charts for you to be able to see this for our frequency polygon. So selecting this, will give us this chart. Some statistics books state that we need to extend these two endpoints, left and the right, to the zero mark for it to look like a polygon, like this graph at the bottom. So see here that the endpoint is extended up to the upper class mark after 169 and to the left side of 124, which is 115. And for us to identify these two values, all we need to do is to identify the class width. To get the class width, we just need to subtract the consecutive uh, lower class limits here. So 129 minus 120 is 9. So the class width is 9. Subtracting uh, 9 from 124 will get 115. While adding 9 on 169 here will give us 178. And we all know that uh, the frequency for these two class marks is a zero. So zero here, zero here, zero here, and another zero here. By selecting these cells, we go to recommended charts, or if you like, we just use the other option a while ago, more line charts, and this one. So notice that the new chart has now extended lines on the two imaginary class marks, 115 and 178. And we can now start formatting our chart. So you can use the quick layout op option again for you to include some labels on the chart. Now, we also know that we could compare or show simultaneously two frequencies in a frequency polygon. So for us to do that, all we need to do is to select these two columns for the frequencies, CTA and CTB, and using the same format. 
for instance, we'll select this one. And we have now the two frequencies in one frequency polygon. By exploring the design and format ribbons, we can change the elements and the look of this graph. Like this one. So by completing the labels, we would have this kind of graph. We also know that we have percentage polygon, right? So if you want to use percentage instead of the frequency, you can create another column for percentage. First, we need to get the sum of these frequencies for CTA by using the sum formula. Equal sign, sum, open parenthesis, and adding these frequencies. So the total frequency is 54 CTA. Now, to get the percentage, all we need to do is to multiply 6 to 100 divided by the total, which is 50. So we need to use the absolute reference if we want to copy-paste the formula. So by doing that and selecting this or dragging the formula will give us the percentage of each frequency in CTA. So let's call this CTA percentage. Alright, so we have now the column for the percentage of CTA. So we can create now a percentage polygon instead of a frequency polygon. So what we need to do is again, selecting this column and this percentage column. So go to insert, go to this option again, and we'll have our percentage distribution for CTA. But if you notice, uh, we don't have uh, an extending line here because we did not place any values, any value here. So if you want to extend the line, all you need to do is to put zero here. So it automatically includes the line or the extended line on both ends of the graph. Another thing is that we need to emphasize that this axis represents the percentage column. So we need to um, include an element saying that this is, or an axis title saying that this is a percentage column or axis. Now we need to go to design our chart element and in this case we need to choose axis titles and choosing primary vertical. By doing this, it will be clear to our audience or a reader that this part is for the percentage column. That is why this is called percentage polygon. Do you know that we could also shade the region under this frequency polygon or in this case, a percentage polygon by using the area function or area chart? So if you want to do that, all you need to do is to select the graph, go to design, select change chart type, and go to area. So here we'll be given a function as the shaded region of the frequency polygon or the percentage polygon. Selecting this, we'll have this kind of chart. The next is the cumulative frequency or percentage graph or in short, Ogive. And for this, we will again use the data about the cost per meal in pesos of restaurants in city A. And for us to construct the Ogive, we need the less than or greater than cumulative frequency. So here, I'm going to use the less than cumulative frequency. And to start, we need the first value for the frequency, which is 6. This one. And by adding this two consecutive frequencies, in this case we have 6 and 7, then adding 13 and 19 by copying this formula, we now have the less than cumulative frequency column. To construct the ogive, we need to select the class mark and the less than cumulative frequency. You can go to recommended charts, but if you don't have a recommended chart function, you can go to line chart or area chart. By selecting more line charts, you can see here that we have 
a particular line chart for the cumulative frequency. So here, it should be ascending, right? We cannot use this uh, kind of chart because it divided the frequencies into two series, the class mark and the less than cumulative frequency. But we all know that what we need is the class mark for the x-axis and the frequency for the left axis. And this is the cumulative frequency because as you notice, it is ascending, right? It should be in ascending order because we have a cumulative frequency. So by selecting this, we'll have the cumulative frequency graph. If you want to show that this left part of the line is extending on the left side up to zero, you can again include a row here and uh, inserting the previous or an imaginary class mark below 124, which is 115. It's also the class mark and the imaginary class mark that we use in the previous example, right? So here, I'm going to include zero. Now, I did not include this row a while ago, so I'm going to select this again, these two columns again. And following the same steps, we have here the cumulative frequency showing another graph that extends the left side of the cumulative line graph here on 115, which has a frequency of zero. And again, you can format this by including all other details in the graph. If you want a deeper understanding of these kinds of uh, graphs that visualize numerical data, you can always check my other videos in my statistics playlist shown in the description below. And that's all for this video. If you want more statistical analysis in Microsoft Excel and how I graph this using the data analysis in the ribbon, please hit the like, share, and subscribe button for your automatic updates. See you in the next video.